Tag Heuer has just put the whole watch industry on notice with some absolutely banging aqua racers. Really want to talk about it. But first, I'm not a watch expert, I'm just a watch nerd. So if I get anything wrong, or you want to correct me, or you just want to mention my moustache, pop down into the comments. And whilst you're down there, why not like, subscribe, ding that bell icon so you never miss another video. And you could always click that join button, that would be cool. Tag Hoyer. Everyone knows the Aqua Racer, everyone has feelings on the Aqua Racer, whether they love it, whether they hate it, whatever their feelings on Tag Hoyer, they have opinions. If you like watches, you've got opinions on Tag Hoyer, whether you love them, whether you hate them. But you can't deny they've been doing some funky, cool stuff recently particularly, in my opinion, in the Carrera line. The Carrera line, with the data, with the skipper, with the glass box, has been getting some really funky new chronographs. And let's not forget the Monaco as well. They've been doing some really interesting stuff with that too. So, it's about time the Aqua Racer got some love in, brought it up to modern standards. And to be honest, it was already a fairly cool, compelling package, I think, uh, with a nice ceramic bezel, nice build quality, really cool aesthetic, but they've just massively improved it. Next up tag, look at the F1. I think that's by far your weakest line, but let's ignore that for now. So they've released two new main models in the Aqua Racer line. First off, we will talk about the Aqua Racer Professional 300 date. What's changed? Well, first of all, it's no longer a 43mm, it's a 42mm, making it a little bit more wearable. The thickness has increased by 0.5mm to 12mm, but that's not, it's not a biggie for me. So let's look at it. First of all, it's got a ceramic bezel. It's fully super luminovered. That dial, that wave pattern, is really pretty. It looks phenomenal. It's got 300 meters water resistance. It's got a magnified date window at six o'clock, obviously sapphire glass. It's got a decorated case back. It's got a full auto adjust on the bracelet, which you don't even need to take the watch off for. So it's absolutely excellent. It works really well if you use it. It's sort of industry leading since you don't even have to take the watch off. And the biggest new feature, what is it Terry? What's the biggest new feature that they've been missing on some of these watches? It's chronometer certified. Terry, chronometer certified. It is chronometer certified, yeah. Which um, Tag's been missing from this lineup for a while. And I think with all the other features, it being chronometer certified makes it a compelling choice next to if you're looking for a professional level Swiss luxury diver, makes it compelling next to Tudor, makes it compelling next to Omega, it looks phenomenal. So the Aqua Racer has also traditionally had a 38 hour power reserve. That's gone. 38 hours, huh, that's, that's crap. Uh, let's be honest, that's crap. The new movement is now the TH3100 caliber made by the ATM division of Solita. So it is a third party movement, but I'm not too worried about that because of A, the fact it's chronometer certified and B, the fact it offers a new 80 hour power reserve. That puts it above Tudor. It's got a better power reserve than Tudor's in-house movements. It's chronometer certified. So it's a massive improvement on the old caliber five they were using. Honestly, what, what's there to complain about? The case back is nicely decorated with a diver helmet. It's got a ceramic bezel. It's got a beautifully decorated dial and Let's talk about the GMT version. The GMT version is only slightly thicker at 13.45 millimeters because of the added complication has, well, it's got a cooler GMT, so it's got an independently settable GMT hand. And it's got either, you've either got a Batman variation with a blue black bezel, or you have a Sprite variation with a black green bezel. Honestly, with the new 80 hour power reserve, with the new, with the micro adjust as well, with the new chronometer certification, with the new 42 millimeter case size and 48 millimeter lug to lug, it's very wearable, 300 meters water resistance, ceramic bezel, I might have said that, be beautiful dial. The only downside that I can possibly think of someone having for this is that it's a Tag Heuer and they have something against Tag Heuer. And if that's you, if you're not a fan of the brand, 
fair enough. But you can't deny this is an incredibly compelling package and I haven't told you the best part yet. Terry, the, the non-GMT version, what do you reckon it costs? Four and a half thousand. So Terry's just guessed four and a half thousand on the price for the non-GMT version. It's been quoted by GQ at around three thousand pounds, which if correct would be phenomenal. Fratello is quoting 3,700 Swiss francs for the non-GMT on a bracelet, which if you then put into a currency converter would be 3,200 pounds. Whatever you think, that is in line with a Black Bay. And I think it looks like a better finished, slightly more complete product than a Black Bay. Big talk. It is big talk. Obviously there's trade-offs, one versus the other. The Black Bay will have bet slightly better timekeeping with a minus three plus five second a day rating versus minus four plus six for a normal cost certified watch. The Black Bay is gonna have an in-house movement versus a Salita in the Tag Heuer. But then I think you get a better level of finishing. And also Black Bays are 200 meters versus this being 300. So Tag Heuer, have made a very compelling product versus a versus a Tudor, something that's competitively priced. Not to even mention the Omega Seamaster 300 meter, which is just in another level of non-competitive pricing at 5,600 pounds. And then the GMT, that looks good. That split colored ceramic bezel as well. It's a cool watch. I love it. Let's put Tudor on notice. Put the whole swass, swass Swas switch industry on notice. Nothing more to say. It looks cool. 4,000 odd Swiss francs for the GMT version. Mwah. Whatever your opinions on tag, you got to love this. What do you think, Terry? It's cheaper than a Tudor and it looks pretty awesome. I like it. Yeah, it does look pretty awesome. It looks a bit uh, nouveau riche. I'd like to try it on. It looks a bit avant-garde. You're going to have it in your store. At some point. Down to don't say it. Don't the, say it. The, don't say it. The, the, don't say it. The town. The town. The town. Yeah. So let us know what you think down in the comments. Do you love it? Do you hate it? If you're down there and you're leaving a comment, why not like, subscribe, ding that bell icon so you never miss another video? And you could click the join button. And on the topic of the join button, thank you very, very much to our channel members on screen now. You guys are the best. I absolutely love you. And I love everyone else too. If you're watching this, you're amazing. And if you're watching this, watch yourself.